You are listening to WHOA Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV Podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. I am your host, Colin Austin, and my co-host, Michael Dees, is actually out of town today. He is, where is he? In Denver? Denver. He's in Denver. So, Mike, I hope you're enjoying Denver. (laughs) Uh, But it's just me, but I have a fantastic guest, and I'm so excited to uh, introduce him today. Today on the show, we have Bobby White, a police officer with the Gainesville Police Department, better known to the community and to the world as the basketball cop. Bobby, welcome. Thanks for having me. How you doing, man? Doing good. Thank you for waking up early and being here after the Memorial Day. We um, this is record. This is actually going out June twenty fourth. But for everybody who's listening, it's recording May twenty eighth. So we just had the Memorial Day weekend. But did you have a good weekend? Well, I worked the whole weekend. I was off yesterday, but yeah, yeah. Well, we appreciate you doing that, man. Um, dude, you have such a crazy story. And I heard. And actually, before I get into everything, I want to talk about our rap giveaway because you said you had actually signed up to win or to try to win the rap spot giveaway yeah, it was perfect timing yeah i just we just finally i i don't like spending money you know <laughs> the foundation's money on stuff that's i need that's outside of the you know stuff going to the community but it, you know it's the nature of the beast you have to invest in it yeah and we've been needing a trailer so i finally bought one and uh everyone's like you got to get it wrapped you got to get it wrapped and i'm like i know but i i don't want to spend another you know, whatever it costs to wrap a trailer. Yeah. And then that came out. I was like, oh, I'm in. like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, so we didn't that's win, awesome. but that's all right. We'll figure it out. Yeah, no worries. Well, we had, I want to give some love to the winner. We had Ryder Husnecker who was, who won, who won the rap, but they were winning it for, this was one of the things that we did where you could actually choose a organization to donate it to. So there was a lot of people who um, entered on behalf of organizations, and the organization that did end up winning was We Foos Human Foosball. Dan over there, so many congrats to We Foos. That's awesome. And Ryder, thanks so much for entering for them. That was a really, really nice thing to do. Have you have you done that Human Foosball thing? I've yet? seen it. it. Looks it looks incredible. <laughs> it's it awesome. looks like I probably wouldn't last more than a you know a few yeah. rounds or something. But <laughs> it's so much fun. It and uh, like- and Dan is a great guy. So many congrats to him. Super psyched for you, dude. And and um, yeah, so support you know We Foos Human Foosball. If you see the trailer, give some love to uh, Rap Spot. Many thanks to them again for being our first sponsor and uh, giving that away with us. We had a bunch of people enter, and it, it was just fun. We Bobby was just commenting on how we ended up doing the giveaway where we dropped all the little pieces of paper. Yeah, it was really <laughs> I was cool. like, I was like, this is not gonna work. If you guys haven't seen the video, it's probably on social. It's still on our social media somewhere, but go go check it out because we basically uh, Taylor over at Rap Spot ended up dropping a bunch of little pieces of paper that had everybody's names from everybody who entered, and uh, I couldn't believe I actually couldn't I was mind blown that only one piece of paper actually fell into the cup and it was just perfect and uh, it was Ryder's name so hey it worked. I'm, I'm excited. So many thanks again to everybody who participated in that. We appreciate you. And um, and so now, Bobby, I know that you've seen uh, one of our episodes. You say you saw Taya's episode. My girl, Taya. You, know, you yeah. know Taya. Shout out to Taya. That was she's so awesome. She's getting ready to do her lemonade stand this. Yeah. I've this known summer. her for years. Yeah. You know, just driving through that neighborhood, and you know, I've given her and her brother backpacks on our when we do our annual backpack giveaways and. Um, but something really cool is we also do Thanksgiving giveaways where we get baskets full of everything you need to feed probably a family of 10, including a turkey and a ham. And I went by there and I offered it to her mom. And her mom's like, how many of these do you have? I said, we have like 12 left. She's like, you know, there's probably someone else that could use it more than us. We're okay, go give it to someone else. So they're Aww. just an awesome family. Yeah, they're yeah. super nice. That's awesome. Well, man, I really want to dive into your story. I want to get into all of it and hear all the great things that happened because um, this vi- this is what blows my mind. Really, is like this this video, this call was January of two thousand sixteen. Yep. I mean, it just seems like yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe it's been over three years now. Yeah, it's this is, it's flown. This is crazy. So so yeah, let's get into it. Like just we like to start with the origin stories. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Like how you know what brought you to Gainesville, and um, and then we're you know let's get into uh, 
to how you became the basketball cop. Yeah, so, um, you know, and it, and it, my story kind of, once people hear it, they, they kind of understand and see, you know, why I do what I do with the youth and, and try to be a mentor and all that stuff. I grew up in South Florida, um, Hollywood, Fort Lauderdale, actually Miramar is where I went to school. And, um, you know, single mom, she never knew my dad. You know, I got a couple sisters, one older, one younger. Mom went off on a bad road with drugs and stuff, became an addict. So I was, you know, I had a pretty rough childhood, went to like six different elementary schools, ran around, you know, never had that male figure in my life. So, but I always, you know, I never, I somehow stayed out of trouble, never got into drugs, was very resilient and just kept on my way, um, you know, opened a business, uh, auto detailing business at a young age, you know, down there did good and eventually started a family and I uh, was day trading stocks for a little while, working for an investment software company in Hawaii. They sent me out to Hawaii to sell investment software and, you know, all over the place, but uh, came back home and got a job at Home Depot, you know, while I was doing the stock trading and that kind of thing, just for benefits. And then that became a career for a while became a manager and uh actually moved up to Gainesville from South Florida with Home Depot because I wanted to get you know I have two kids my son's 17 my daughter's 19 and uh wanted to get them out of that South Florida environment something a little more calm where I thought it'd be a better place to raise kids and had an opportunity to come up to Gainesville with Home Depot and um once I got up here it's you know I've always wanted to be a cop you know, it was something always intrigued me about being a police officer and, you know, being kind of free out in the community, meeting lots of different people, you know, those kind of things, trying to make some kind of difference, you know, and there's so many ways you can make a difference as a police officer as, you know, I think I'm doing now. And uh, had an opportunity and just switched careers up here, put myself through the academy, got hired by the Gainesville Police Department my first month in the academy and, and here I am. So what year was that when, when I moved you up here in 2006? Okay, and in 2008 was, was when, when I became a, a cop. Okay, cool. So I mean, tell me a little bit about the the story. That's <laughs> I mean, there's been so much that's happened in these three years, yeah. right? I mean, it's it, it's had to have been a roller coaster. Um, you were just answering a call that day. Yeah, it was just I was on patrol, and uh, you know the. The city's divided up into sectors, um, and then you have in each sector, that that's your team. So the way they dispatch call, and then you're in a zone, you're assigned to a zone, like right now I'm golf zone. And um, kind of the way it goes is if calls come out in your zone and you're available, you handle that call. If it's a little higher priority call in your sector, they'll dispatch you to whatever zone it is in your sector because of the priority, and if it's a super high priority call. I mean, you're, it's game on anywhere in the city you'll go. So we try to help each other out in our sector and a noise complaint popped up in the sector next to mine about kids playing basketball in the street. And that unit was tied up on a call. And um, I would have taken the call anyways, but this one, it, it's the one thing I noticed when I became a cop, you know, cause I know when I grew up, I loved the police. I, I thought they were like superheroes. You know, I always tried to find some stupid question to ask a cop if I was a kid, you know, I wanted to talk to him or yeah. at least get him to look at me and wave or something. You right, know? yeah, for sure. So I thought that's how it might be, you know, that these kids out here are gonna be like that. And it's it's not like that uh, in a lot of parts of the town, you know, particularly the high crime areas where the police are taking a lot of enforcement action um, just by chance, because that's the way the, you know, where the crime is a lot of times. So when we're where we're called to go. so. I noticed right away that the kids were like scared of us. You know, a lot of kids, they're unsure. You can tell it's the weirdest thing. You know it when you see it, but you can tell they kind of want to talk to you, but they're like very hesitant. There's actually a, a video I posted a couple of weeks ago that I just happened to capture on a body worn camera, that perfect example of that. And um, so I've always- what, Just like the hesitancy or? Yeah, it was a video I was walking into um, uh, kids count it's an after school program out east that I do a lot of work with and I go in there and I talk to the kids and they all know me and I was walking in and I just saw a kid walking away and in the corner of my eye I'm saying hi to people and 
I could tell he was like, I could feel him like looking at me and he like wanted to talk to me. So I stopped and I'm like, hey buddy. And he ran up and wanted to fist bump me and then his sister did and you know, if I wasn't paying attention, if I had tunnel vision, that would have been a missed opportunity. But that's that's how it is. These kids want to, but they're unsure. They're either they saw something on the internet or on the news or they're, you know, one of their parents told them something negative about the police and they're, you know, they're, they're negative. So, yeah. So I've always made it my mission between calls, you know, during calls to always, always acknowledge the kids, you know, high five of them walk into a call, get out, talk to them, um, have a basketball or football in my car at all times that I can just get out and play ball with them. It's something I've always done. So when I saw that call pop up, I'm like, I've never seen kids playing basketball at that location because I'll stop, you know, and this was before the foundation. Um, I actually, the summer before this all happened, I found out that there was federal grant money that the Gainesville Police Department had um, from DJJ for, for youth type activity, something to, you know, connect with your youth. And we had like $3,000 that the police department couldn't figure out what to do with like, we're going to lose this money. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So, uh, I bought a bunch of basketballs and footballs so that every patrol officer that wanted one could have a basketball and a football in the trunk of their car. Cause that's a, it's an icebreaker, you know, if, sure. if you, uh, you pull up to a bunch of kids, they have no idea why you're there. They don't know if you're there to arrest somebody. They don't know if you're there, what, what you're doing. But if you pull up and you pop your trunk open and you get out with a football, what else are you there to do? Sure. And it instantly changes the whole tone. So we did that and then I, we spent a thousand bucks on renting uh, Sweet Dreams. I don't know if you've ever seen their big fire truck, ice cream truck. It's like a retired old fire truck. Yeah, I think I have actually. It's awesome. So That's cool. It cost a thousand bucks. We rented that for a whole day and went to out to Gardenia and Village Green and served 500 servings of ice cream. <laughs> so those are, this was always in my mind. Like there were so many things I wanted. I always wanted to rent an ice cream truck and just drive around and give away free ice cream. Yeah. Um, so now Jimmy, who I don't know if you know Jimmy, the ice cream man out east, mm -mm. he should probably be on this show. Yeah. He's got a pretty incredible story That's, actually. Okay. So cool. um, I, I'll always pull up to him and get out and buy the, all the kids ice cream. I was doing that before. So I was like, God, I'd love to just drive around it's in uniform. So when I found about this grant money, I was like, let's, can we do that? And it got approved and that's what we did. So that was before the foundation started. Yeah. Okay. So when this call came out, it was just another opportunity to go meet some new kids and, and try to create a positive experience for them. Keep going. Sorry, I'm uh, no. turning the AC down. Oh, okay. He saw me pick up my phone. <laughs> turning the yeah, AC so down, a little warm in here. It, I can control everything from this device. That's pretty it's awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah, so that's what that was, man. I was just like, perfect. Kids playing basketball at five o'clock in the afternoon and someone's calling to say they're being too noisy. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to go, you know, add to the problem. You know, so. <laughs> I mean, was that the, was that the, Intent, like I mean, did you kind of go out to that call knowing that it was a joke? Like in mind, like you're like really come on, like is this serious or it was it like all right, this is a serious complaint? Like mm -hmm. let me let me address this or like like so, what was going through your mind when you receive a call? Like, I, I'm I'm trying to picture like as a police officer, are you kind of doing like an eye roll? Like oh my gosh, are you serious or is it like uh, oh like okay, like I got a I got a job to do. Let me get out there and see what's actually going on. No, on this particular call, it was probably 95% eye roll okay. and 5%, okay, I'm still a cop. It's a citizen that does have a complaint. I have to, you know, there we get a lot of complaints, honestly, that you look at it and you're like, we shouldn't even be going to this call. Like, this is a waste of our time. You know, I mean, some some ridiculous stuff. Like, Does that happen a lot? Yeah, like, I'm not joking. We've gotten call. we get calls all the time about my, my 10 year old won't get out of bed and go to school. <laughs> You know, and it's those are ones I call my sergeant and I say, I'm not going to that call because that's the parent. She's making me be the bad guy. It goes against everything that I'm trying to do as a police officer and, you know, and with the foundation is to be the bad guy, you know, so. That's gotta be incredible. I mean, we get ridiculous calls from like ducks are pooping on my porch to my, I can't tune my TV in to TV 20. I'm not kidding. These are real calls. But this one, you know, when it's a noise complaint, you have to, you know, you have to go and make sure they're not 
like have a radio blasting or something that's too much. But I knew that it wasn't going to be that, and it wasn't. When I got there, there was only two kids, um, Autrell and Richard, who I know now. They're like second family. Yeah, um, were out there just shooting hoops. But they, but they, they play every day out there. This it's a group of about eight kids. Okay, every single day they're out there playing basketball which means they're not doing anything wrong every single day, which right. is fantastic. And there's no parents around at these times, so they have the opportunity to go roam around and do whatever they want. And when you get teenage boys roaming around doing whatever they want, sometimes they make bad decisions. So these kids were had the ability to do that, and they chose just to play. They would play basketball outside when they get too hot. They go inside and play 2K 16, I guess it was. Yeah. Then, you know, <laughs> they play PlayStation basketball. and then, Sure. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what it was for me. It was like I'm gonna go meet some new kids. Okay, and so you get out there, and I mean, like dash cam, dash cam on the car was just rolling, right? right? Like and any so other it was car. like I mean it was like perfect. I mean, I look at these things that happen. You're like, oh my gosh, like everything was just perfect in the way it happened, right? Like yeah, dash cam was recording. Yeah, it where I happened to pull this. up, you know, I mean, it, it just. Yeah, it turn the camera on like we do on every call. Destiny, really. Yeah, it was weird. And so you get out there and you start talking to them and basically addressing <laughs> the noise complaint, but instead you like start playing basketball with these with these guys. Did you did you school them? <laughs> no. no, I'm not. I'm not good at basketball. I can tell you that. Are, are you better now that you become the basketball cop? Yeah, my I can shoot. Okay, <laughs> but all that ball handling and stuff is these kids just run me ragged. Yeah. So, I mean, what led to this getting put on the internet and ultimately what became a very viral moment? Yeah, so the, I was out there for about, I think about 15 minutes with the kids and we were busy and uh, I asked them, cause I was like, this is really cool. You, I, and you'll see in the video, um, Ben Tobias, who no longer works for us, our PIO, um, he went on the bigger and better things with Allstate. Um, he, he's, uh, he's the one that edited that video. And that's kind of, he's pretty good. It's like a little side hobby of his with, you know, he knows how to use the software and do all put yeah. the fancy stuff in there. But um, at the end of the video, you could see where I said, do you guys play out here all the time? And they said, yeah. And I said, all right, I'm gonna come back with some backup. <laughs> and, and the plan was to get a few officers that I know can play basketball, because there's a lot of, our cops that play ball on a regular basis. And I was gonna get a few of us to come back another day and kind of build on this positive experience I've created for these kids, because they were awesome. And um, and I leave, and it, it, I don't know if you saw in the video, but they lowered the dunk from 10 feet to like nine and a half for me to dunk on. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, when I got in my car, um, our, our dash cam videos, you have to manually turn off and there's a big record thing in the middle of your screen so you know it's on and I, I'm like, oh, I gotta turn my, and when I was turning it off, I was like, oh man, I wanna see my dunk. So I played, you know, we can play it back. digital, you can play it back right there and I was okay. like, man, that's pretty cool. And I know Ben always likes to, he would always like to share positive interactions with the community. So with my phone, I recorded just the dunk and I texted it to him and I said, if. If, a, if you're gonna call the police on kids playing basketball too loud and being loud, this is gonna be my response. <laughs> and he just you put, he just responded yes in capital letters with like five exclamation points. And that was it. So okay. um, yeah, so days later, probably two, three days later, I get a text like two in the afternoon from Ben. He goes, go look at GPD's Facebook page. I was like, okay. So I go, put it on, I was like, and I see the edited, it's edited to like a minute 40 or something. Okay, so did, he went and pulled the footage He off. pulled the, yeah, the okay. actual dash cam video. Looked, right. re, you know, watched the whole thing and then put his little titles and his hot, hashtag hoops not crime, that, that was Ben, um, which stuck. We actually have a song, you probably don't even know, an actual song on iTunes. Uh, but, for real? Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay, it's, okay. It's awesome. Cool. Um, it's called Enjoy the Noise. <laughs> and I'll tell you the story how that name came up too. It's kind of funny, but uh, so yeah. So I I look at the video and I'm like, didn't think much. I'm like, ah, it's cool, you know, it's a pretty cool video. 
and it he had just posted it like a few minutes be- ago and it already had like 200 views like within two minutes which is a lot and at the time gpd's facebook page had like fourteen thousand followers so you know if it was on a page that had millions of followers it wouldn't be that that big a deal so sure. so i'm like man that's a lot and you know you scroll you can refresh rather you know i refresh the facebook it's like 300 i refresh again like 400 and it, it just kept going crazy and it got to like a thousand i text ben i'm like this thing has a thousand views. He's like, I know I'm watching it. I'm in a meeting, but so <laughs> what he did, he, he basically <laughs> was trying to finish it up and rushed it and because he had to go to a meeting and he hit post and went yeah. to the meeting. And uh, so he's in the meeting and we're texting back and forth. I'm like, are you watching this? And then it gets to 10,000 views. And I'm like, this thing's going to go to like 50,000 views. And it, and it just blew by. I'm like, this is going to go to a hundred. And within six, I think it was about six hours, it hit a million views. That's amazing. It was, and we just couldn't even figure it out. Like, I haven't seen a video still that gained a million views in six hours. I just haven't seen one. Yeah, I mean, it just has to be in in a time, in a day and age where, where you're right, there's, you know, there's just so much talk around police officers and community and like, and these different things. And a lot of it, and a lot of it is super negative, right? And I mean, was it, I like to think that it just kind of hit at the right time. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. is this is the positivity in it, and the and the yes, the absolutely. Like you don't have time to go and you know take care of ducks pooping on stuff. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but but for carving out time for kids in the community, and like you say, like being that that voice of of positivity and pos- I mean that's exactly what every community needs, and it's part of our job. You know, and a lot of people. You know, I posted a video a couple of weeks ago um, where we did this mock traffic stop on this girl who had no idea because one of a kid that one of our detectives mentors wanted to ask his girlfriend in a cool way to go to prom. <laughs> so right after my shift ended, I cleared it through my lieutenant. You know, we weren't using any any of the community's time, which to me it would have been fine anyways. So. Right. But a lot of people are like, this is a waste of taxpayers' money and this and there's sure. And it's very, you know, the negative comments are the minority. You know, it has four and a half million views in two weeks. Right. You know, this video and it's all positive, but there's always gonna be those they don't understand that this this is part of our job actually, you know, is to get out there and be human, you know, and laugh with the community and, and this kind of stuff. It's For sure. it's important. If we were, you know, Robocop, it we it'd be a mess. For sure. So I mean, what's it? So when you noticed that that video, you know, got up to a million views in a handful of hours, I mean, what's going through your mind at this point? Do you just you're like sitting back, being like, oh my gosh, what's what's going to happen next? <laughs> I mean, I didn't think anything would happen. Just like next. go back, I, to, go back to work, and yeah, I just thought that's that's amazing. You know, what kept going through my head is I I don't understand why this video and um, it was it was right around the time with Ferguson and all that stuff was going on. Right. And, and uh, I think you have two groups of people out there in the world, the ones that that were anti-police and just looking for stuff, you know, looking for something bad to happen on the internet that they can share. And then you have the people, which I think are the majority, that just are looking for the positive and, and you know, don't believe the hype kind of thing. And uh, this video, I guess, because it starts out with a police dash cam, it could go either way. So I think it- It grabs your attention. Every, whatever side you're on, you're gonna start watching this. Right, thing. you're kinda like, oh, let me let me yeah. see what's gonna happen here. You know, so, and reading the comments, I was like, just, you know, scrolling through thousands of comments in the first day and uh, waiting for those negative. And they're really, with this video, there really wasn't many at all. It was. A lot of people though were saying, oh, I was waiting for it to be bad, something bad, a cop and a kid. You know, white cop, black kid, even right. to be more specific, something it was bad almost to like happen. An, is it, doesn't that frustrate you that there was almost like an expectation? Yes, it, it's, it was very frustrating. And um, yeah, so I was just reading comments and I didn't think anything of it. I ended up going to sleep because I was on evening shift then where I, I came into work at four or five, I can't remember what the shift was then, it's all changed, but um, so I went to sleep and after, you know, had a million, so I was like, you know, we're millionaires, we're internet millionaires, <laughs> I'm good, you know? Yeah. So I really didn't think anything of it. I never thought that there would be any 
thing come from it. And I didn't want it, you know, sure. I didn't expect it. It was just. Just a police officer doing his job. Yeah, so. So what happens, cause now the virus, so it goes viral, it's getting shared a bunch, and and then you have, I mean, really major news stations across, I mean, the planet, really, right? Because I yeah, think it was, BBC even, you had Yeah, the Fox BBC and videos, and the BBC video was approaching 100 million views. Okay. And talking to the BBC um, directly, they said they have never had a video in the history of the BBC and social media get nearly as many views as that. So even overseas, it, it's, it's gaining attention. That, that BBC story, if you go to it, you'll see it's just, it still keeps getting comments and shares today. Yeah. And I, last I checked, it was like 82 million views. So, yeah. but the funny thing that happened is I went to bed and I, I usually, cause I come in and work overnight or, you know, work nights. I sleep in while my phone is vibrating and almost off my nightstand. I'm looking, it's Ben. <laughs> and I see it's Ben texting and I just put it down. And, uh, Pick it up again, it's Ben calling, Ben email, I'm like, wake up, you gotta wake up. You know, the video's at like four or five million views by morning and <laughs> finally I call him, I'm like, what? He goes, dude, you need to you need to get in here. And I'm like, I, no, I work evenings, I'll get in there. He goes, no, you don't understand. News for Jacksonville's like on their way here, you know, Orlando, news stations are calling from all over the place. GPD's e uh, voicemail was full from people calling from like Australia. Oh my from gosh. All of, like, yeah, it was crazy. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, well, you gotta get in here. We gotta start doing these news interviews. And and I said, nope. And he's like, what do you mean? Like, he, so he's the PIA. <laughs> sure. You know, he's a social media manager. He just went viral. He's a millionaire. You know what I mean? The social media millionaire, he, that's he hit the <laughs> jackpot. So uh, I'm like, dude, I'm not doing any interviews on this. He's like, what are you talking about? I said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing it. I said, I didn't do anything spectacular. It was nothing innovative. It was nothing that thousands of cops across the country wouldn't have done that day, that same exact thing. I said, I'm not taking any undue credit for what I know and you know cops do every single day. I'm, it's just not, I don't feel right doing it. And he was getting a little frustrated like, Cause he probably assumed I would and was telling these, everyone that's calling like, yeah, come yeah, on sure. in, he'll be, you know, <laughs> sure. he'll do it. And I was like, I just don't feel right doing it. I'm not putting my face to something like I'm some kind of super cop hero. You know, uh, this is what most cops would have done in this situation. Right. You know, so sorry, but tell him no. I said, I told him it's, you're the one that posted the video. You talk to him, it's your video. Tell your story, you posted the video, it's your story now. Why'd you post the video? You know what I mean? Yeah. You can tell him I talked to Officer White and he said this, but I said, I'm not doing it. So he was kind of frustrated. He goes, well, what about our local media? And I said, okay, we're community partners with them. We don't want to shun them out of a story. You know, sometimes we ask them to, you know, do stuff. So I'll do the local, you know, TV 20 or CBS four or whatever it was then GTN, I can't remember, but he's like, all right. so. I come into work at my normal time and someone's like, News 4 Jacksonville's been waiting for you all day in the lobby. And I'm like, well, oh, I'm not doing it, so send them home. So we sent News 4 Jacksonville home. No. I'm like, I'm not doing it. So I did the local ones and Ben texts me and says, uh, hey, please say yes. Um, mm -hmm. One more interview, just one interview. And uh, I said, who is it? And he said, T TMZ sports. And I've seen that where you like live in, you know, with Skype or whatever. And sure. it's a cool show. I love it. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's entertaining. Those guys are hilarious. And I'm like, nope, not doing it. I'm not going to put my face on TV, you know, to the world saying I did something great. I'm not doing it. And he said that they said they were going to get the NBA involved. So that changed everything for me because I was like, man, if the NBA is going to get involved, they're not gonna do something cool for me, I, I don't care. You know, I've been to NBA games, but they're gonna do something cool for these kids. Yeah. You know, so I'm like. Cause they do like the whole NBA Cares campaign. Yeah, and, then. and uh, I've become close with the NBA and have worked with them since then, but, so now I really know, but yeah. So was, like, was it for you just like recognizing this opportunity to like really be, you know, that 
as much as you didn't want to be a face, you're like, oh, I could actually be a face of, you know, of the community and, and really and like really representing, you know, police officers as a whole. Like where where did that change happen for you? Well, with, was it just this, because of that? With, there was a couple things, mostly for this with the TMZ. It was I'm going to go out there and do it with the hopes that something really cool happens for these kids that probably will never get to go to an NBA game or something like that. Yeah. And then a little bit of it was reading the comment. There was a comment that kept popping up and popping up from all different people and it was meant to be a compliment. And it was, we need more cops like you. So I thought about that that whole first night, like, God, I, I hate that people think that this isn't ordinary. Yeah. That, that I'm different. And it was eating me up because I had no way of really telling the world that. So that was a little bit of it is, you know what, this might be an opportunity for me to go say that. To be that voice. You know, to a big audience that there are cops everywhere just like me and better than me. Um, but mostly it was something cool happening for the kids. So I did that interview and um, while we're on there, Tracy McGrady pops up. You know, T-Mac used to play for the, mm -hmm. I think he's a Hall of Famer now. He pops up saying, man, thank you so much for what you did. I was one of those kids one day and um, I couldn't imagine if the police would have came out and told me I couldn't play ball in the street. Like it might've changed my life. Right. And, um, and that was it. And something funny happened at the end because Ben, the producer said, hey, have Ben stand by. Or, or the guy I was dealing with said, have Ben, make sure Ben calls the producer or something. I was like, that's weird. Cause <laughs> whatever. So I go home and remember at the end of the video, I said, I'm gonna come back with backup. So about a day later, Ben says, hey, when are you planning on going out there and having the rematch? And that's the other thing, people on Facebook were like, we wanna see the rematch, put it on Facebook, you sure. know, film it. You know, We wanna see when you go back out. People just wanted more, they weren't done. So I said, I don't know, I haven't really thought about it. He goes, well, it's Saturday at one. I'm like, I come in at four. He goes, yeah, you come in at noon Saturday? So, it, and I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, if you've never trusted me ever, you need to trust me today. And honestly, I was like, okay, I was trying to like put two and two together. I said, T-Mac's coming, I bet. Because of the call with the producer and T-Mac shows up and he's a local guy. And uh, I think he still probably lives in Orlando or somewhere in Florida, yeah. but I was like, okay, that'd be cool. And um we all get there, we're in the briefing room with my team of cops, and Shaq walks in the door. So <laughs> we found out how that all worked out is, um, TM, you know Shaq's a reserve police officer, right? I had no idea. So he's been a reserve police officer in multiple cities around the okay. country as he's played at different teams. Wow. And uh, he actually, while, when he's in these agencies, he typically works in their ICAC, which is the Internet Crimes Against Children, like the sexual predators, online predators. Okay. And he'll actually go out and work with these guys sometimes on these details. So at the time, he was deputized or sworn in as a reserve down in Doral. So TMZ calls Shaq, and they're like, hey, we have this guy, this basketball cop, because the media, you know, they were doing stories on their own without talking to me. And... um we have this basketball cop in Gainesville and Shaq, we want you to surprise him on the show. He's, we ha we're having him on the show. And uh, Shaq's like, I saw the video and get somebody else to do that because I'm going to Gainesville. So he, uh, they all set it up. Ben was sworn to secrecy and <coughs> set it up through um, Shaq's assistant who I've gotten to know him pretty well, Alex. And um, yeah, they set it up and Shaq just shows up in Gainesville and's like, "Let's go play ball." Yeah, yeah. Got pulled over on the way here by a state trooper. I <laughs> no, thought, it, yeah, really? I thought he was making up a story, but a few months later, I was at a gas station on duty and a trooper rolls up and he goes, "Oh, you're a basketball cop." And I'm like, "Yeah." He goes, "You know, I pulled Shaq over <laughs> when he was coming to see you," and I was like, "All right." So, uh, yeah. So, and then, what was he, he doing? Speeding or what? Yeah, he was. <laughs> <laughs> he was driving his own. He was driving himself with yeah. Alex. Um, he was like, "I'm going to Gainesville to do some yeah, good stuff." He was stuff, in a rush man. to come <laughs> see the kids. I mean, yeah. yeah. So, and then you know, once Shaq got involved and that hit the media, it was. I couldn't. 
you can ignore couldn't. it anymore. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just go with that. There are thousands of cops like me all over them. You know, this, there, we need more cops like you. That was kind of my motivation to go, okay, bring it on. Whatever, Ben. So for two, two to three weeks, Ben was like my media manager. It was insane. Sure. I mean, it was, you know, Fox and Friends. Fox and Friends and Good Morning America were fighting over me. Like, because which one would have me first? And I ended oh up gosh. doing them in the same morning. But it was crazy. Um, Fox and Friends sent a crew from Orlando to set up a studio like you wouldn't believe in the Gainesville Police Department's in our Hall of Heroes. And I went to UF multiple times to, I think that's where I did Good Morning America in their journalism. You know, have you been in there with their big, yeah. they have big TV cameras and yep. satellite it in with Good Morning America. And it just, it never stopped. I, I guarantee I've done a hundred interviews or more you know, over the last three years, but it was insane at first. It so was, that, the, the moment with Shaq, Shaq comes in, I mean, this is like when you really were just like, all right, I'm gonna own this, and now you're like the basketball cop. I mean, cause that basically the world kind of coined that, right? right. Like, yeah, the media. The media was like, oh, the basketball that. cop, the basketball right. cop. And and then after that moment, the Shaq moment, that's when you kind of own that name and like, all right, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the basketball cop. I'm gonna be this voice for police officers. And right. yeah, it was either happen. it was either look, just leave me alone and kind of be a jerk. You know what I mean? Because so many people just wanted to keep it going, or you know, we're gonna we're run with it. And another thing that that happened and it's what led to the foundation is, um, just days after this, a, a basketball goal shows up at the police department, like a 54 inch Spalding portable goal. And from somebody in Tampa, I found out later, and um, they wanted to like, go donate this to someone else. Like, keep this going. Like, you met these kids, go donate this to some other kids. So I put those two things together. And when I started doing all the media, I wasn't thinking about starting a foundation. Sure. Um, but you know, once the media madness started going crazy, and, I, and, and if you look back, if you Google basketball cop, there, you'll see, I mean, it's, it's endless. Every, every media outlet out there has done a story. Some of them more than others. I've been, you know, CNN did a documentary, you know, ESPN has done two stories. Um, it's probably my favorite one is ESPN that they did for college game day. Here is when it aired. Oh, that's cool. Um, but you know, I've had CNN, ESPN, film crews in my living room for NBC. <laughs> Lester Holt was here for three days filming. I mean, CNN was two days, ESPN was two days, filming me driving in the car is crazy. So uh, that just went and went. So once I started thinking about we need more cops like you, you know, and I'm using the media the best I can to prove to people that or just to at least say there's thousands of cops like me ever everywhere. Hopefully it catches on to some people and they just believe me. But then I started thinking, man, and then people started sending basketballs and more of these donations started coming in. And so I was like, man, this might be a short term, you know, I know how social media is. Something goes viral, it's viral for a little bit, it dies off, it's dead. Sure. So I'm like, you know what? What if I started an organization? It's can't, and I've never run, I've had my own business. Like I said, I ought to detail in business. So I had some business acumen in mind. Yep. But the nonprofits, and I've learned is a whole nother beast. But I'm like, I could do it, you know, on a whim. No money to put into it, no startup money, no nothing. I'm like, I'm just going to start a GoFundMe page and I'm going to ask for donations and I'm going to prove, now I can start proving to people, I'll start getting donations for basketballs and basketball goals and I'll start shipping these to agencies all over the country and saying, hey, go do this in your city. Then people will see, doesn't matter what city you're in, these cops want to do this and they will. So, and at the same time, you're making a difference with those cops and kids. Because I believe every, every positive interaction with a cop and a kid is another opportunity for um, something to click where there's something special about that kid or that interaction where maybe now you have a mentorship. Yep. And I've, I have a handful of them here. Um, so I, that's what motivated me to start the foundation. At the same time, talk. I'm getting to know the kids from the original viral video. Tyree is that's the kid who lives in that house um, and all his friends. So I'm there one day, and I'm looking in the backyard, 
and there's a nice little size backyard. It's an old house. If his mom's owned it forever. I'm like, do you guys rent or own? He's like, no, no, we own this house. I like grew up. My brother grew up in this house. I was like, huh? So I asked his mom, would you be object to me putting a basketball court in the backyard? She goes, no. So I got with someone I know that's in construction. I'm like, how much would it cost? And he's like, I'll do it for you. I, I got you. So we poured a That's 24 awesome. by 30 foot slab lifetime product sent a beautiful in ground glass backboard, you know, regulation goal. And that's the day we launched the foundation publicly. We had a Harlem Globetrotter came out and surprised cool. the kids. And um, we started the GoFundMe that day. And, and that was, I was at first, it was real simple. We're going to buy basketball goals and basketballs and ship them around. And it's constantly evolved into um, where we're at now is, you know, I have my annual um, initiatives that I'll do, like, you know, the backpacks, uh, which is a little different. You know, a lot of churches and stuff and organizations will get, you know, hundreds of backpacks in one day and they'll be like the first however many kids get a backpack. And that's great right? because there's a lot of stuff in those backpacks that in a lot of these families just can't afford it. Then they got to send their kids to school with no backpack. And you know how it is these days. Kids are mean. And they'll, oh, you're poor. You, you, know, you don't even have a backpack. You got to rely on the school. I mean, it happens. So the backpack programs are great. Mine's a little different where we get fully stocked backpacks, everything in the elementary school list in a little basketball cop foundation backpack. And we keep them in the patrol cars. And as we're out on calls for service and we get some kids, we'll talk to them. Hey, you ready for school? And most of the time they're not. And, I'm, and you pull backpacks out and go, here you go. And it's, I mean, I've had parents in tears over yeah. it. Like she's like, man, that's like a hundred dollars worth of stuff, you know? And the kids are so happy. And so that's the way I do mine. We do that. We do, um, like I said, the Thanksgiving thing. We do a huge Christmas thing where cops find, identify families they want to help. And then we supply them with three, four, wrapped brand new toys per kid and they surprise them on Christmas morning. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so we're doing, we did about a thousand toys last Christmas. So but what's we, it, what's it like now? I mean, seeing, you know, this is, you're over, over, you know, three and a half years in since that video, right? And now you've got this great organization and I mean, seeing the impact and, and what you're able to do, for, you know, being, being that voice, I mean, what is that like for you? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's has awesome. it still does it has it sunk in yet? Like, that, I still that you are that person. I still don't understand it. Yeah, and it it that that part of it about basketball cop is just that's never going to make sense to me. That you know, literally, I can't go places. You know, off duty, I'm shopping at Publix, and people, people recognize like, oh, hey, you. you're a basketball cop. <laughs> Can you take a picture of my kids? Like, I'm some celebrity or something. That's never going to sink into me. That just okay. that doesn't make any sense. I'm just a cop. You know, I'm just a regular guy, but if it makes them happy and it makes a positive experience for the kids, that's fine. You know, I'll never really truly understand how that video went that viral, but it did. Um, and, you know, like I said in the beginning, I want to become a cop to make some kind of difference. You know, and I think the most typical answer when you, you're in your police, police interview and they're like, why do you want to be a cop? Because I want to fight crime and I want to keep the city safe and I want to, and that's all. You know, that's that standard answer that, you know, everybody gives. But in reality, that's your job. You know, you're going to do the best you can at that. You can't control all you. You know, we're reacting to stuff most sure. of the time. But you, there's so many ways that you can make a difference, you know. And, and once you find out how it is you want to do that and use that position you have to do it is when you're really succeeding as a cop. And, and um that was it for me as the kids, you know, I love kids. And I noticed that right in the beginning that, you know, when I was a brand new police officer, where am I going to be able to make the biggest impact? You know, and, and I had two, two ideas is, you know, drugs. I hate drugs. I mean, drugs are just, you know, killing our planet, you know, destroying families generation after generation. It took my mom away from me, you know, at a young age and, she died of a drug overdose in a hospital. So mm. I'm like, I'm going to fight drugs, you know, put drug dealers in jail. And I'm, I'm going to do the best I can to, to create positive interactions with the kids. 
and hopefully they don't go that route. So it's uh, that's kind of been my things. And what's really stuck and where I see I can make the biggest difference is with the kids. You know, it's something that isn't, they don't teach in the academy. It's something you won't see in any police manual. It's something that a lot of people don't even talk about. And I think it's, those are the things where you can make the biggest real difference in this job that are gonna last after you're gone. So that's, that's, that's what it's about for me. I mean, it, it very much feels like this moment, this moment in time and all these different things that happen. Like this, is, this has been a, a turning point or at least it feel like when I when I look at, or this is obviously out, outside perspective, right? Like I see this, I'm like, man, what if you hadn't answered that call that day? You know, would would the same would the same result have happened? What if you hadn't sent that vid, you know, that text to Ben? Right. Would the same thing? I, 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 I'm one of those people, like I look at those situations, I'm like, what if what if these pieces hadn't fallen into place exactly like this? Would would any of this exist? Would this opportunity to like really impact the world in a very positive way ever have happened? Um, I mean, yeah. do those things even cross your, like the cross founda- your mind? Like the foundation itself? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but not- like, I mean, not, not even the foundation itself, but even the opportunity just to like shed some positi- positivity. Yeah. I don't know, think, I don't think so. I think the video, without it, I wouldn't have been able to do what I, because you need a, you know, you need a platform like an athlete, an athlete who's, you know, LeBron James can go start, you know, if he started a hot dog business, it would be a success. If he, whatever he wants to do, because he has a platform, you know, he's LeBron James, he has this big audience, he has this big platform. So, um, you know, I've always wanted to do stuff to you know rent the ice cream truck you know put basketballs and footballs in cars but i can't afford it right so you kind of just concede that um you're just gonna one kid at a time do the best you can and you've done all you can do and you know yeah you i could have thought hey let me come up with this idea to start raising money to put basketballs you know goals and balls around the country but it, it wouldn't have I wouldn't have had the audience, first of all, big enough to, you know, you're in marketing, right? Yeah. So I wouldn't have had the audience. I don't have the upfront capital to make something like that happen. It, it was one of those things that I was given a platform and that I think that's the only reason it even got a little bit of a bite to start taking off. And then since then, it's been, it's just been me just working my butt off. I mean, you know, doing, you know, I manage all my social media myself. I manage my website, which I haven't updated in months. Um, But continue to do so in a very positive way. I mean, I think that's what's really cool about this experience is that there's so much negativity. I mean, whether it's politics, whether, I mean, what people fighting about things on social media, that's that's where a lot of people like to vent, right? They get on social media and they vent and there's a lot of negativity out there. And it's so refreshing to see something like this experience, which was super positive. And then, and then you're continuing to build on that. Like you say, you're, you're, posting all the time and sharing. And then I, I often see you sharing other uh, content from police officers across the country. Right. I mean, maybe even, that's the, mostly, even the world that are doing things within their community, right? Yeah, and that's the bulk of what I share on my page. And it, and it goes right back to, there's thousands of cops like me all over, so. Right. Um, but have you noticed that, and, and maybe it's just the, the timing of their, <laughs> again, outside perception, it seems like it almost sparked that yes. fire because I, I feel like now I'm seeing a lot more content around, you know, the, the positive interactions between police officers and the community. Um, there was all, even a whole recently, a whole thing that went super viral with police officers doing like dance videos within their department. Lip syncs. And, you know, lip, and, lip yeah, syncs yeah. And like, I mean, things that have gone extremely, extremely viral across the country. I mean, I look at that and I'm like, a lot of that has stemmed and sparked from your video. Yeah, I I think there is some something to that because there there's t- I think there's two reasons. Um, there before my video, and I don't think there's any more cops out there doing. I don't think there's more cops now doing these types of things. I think that's stayed pretty flat. They've always been out there, um, but. 
I've said it over and over that we we're always humble. We never want to record these things. We never want to, because that's not what it's about. It's about that interaction. And I think, for one, I think cops after my video, cops started seeing that that this could make a bigger impact outside of this interaction because if I share this, thousands of people are gonna see it and I can change thousands of perceptions, not just this one. Right. And then the other part of it is I think when, when it come, came to, it kind of turned the tide on law enforcement um, and social media to where I, I don't know that a lot of law enforcement agencies had have PIOs like Ben that are right. willing to to gamble a little bit and you know we we're law enforcement we can't put like funny stuff right we can't put fun stuff we have to like this is the bad guy or we arrested this or this is where there's a traffic crash you know take a different route it you know i think it kind of changed made social media media managers law enforcement social media managers see that not only is this okay but people love this yeah like people love it and the i opportunity think opportunity there I think, so I think officers started recording some more of this stuff. I think citizens started recording more because so many citizens probably saw this and was like, I wanna record this and send it to my police department or the news or put on social media and have my cops go viral too. So I think it just kind of made it okay and encouraged people to go start putting this. And it, and it has, there's been a huge increase, especially basketball I, I can't remember before mine seeing more than one or two posts about cops playing basketball with kids. And now it's, right. I, my phone doesn't stop. Like, you know, Facebook is the main thing. I'm on Instagram and Twitter too. I don't use them much, but I mean, it's the, the messages I get are constant emails and not a day goes by where somebody does a citizen doesn't send me hey have you seen this one have you seen this one and most of the ones i share if i don't see them first i usually don't it's because someone sends Send me hey there's a cop in this town and those are the ones i share them immediately and then the other thing i do um not all the time but probably half the time i reach out to that officer and i'm like hey you're doing awesome stuff i want to help is there anything um I can help you with that you've wanted to do. Cause I go back to where I would thought I want to rent an ice cream truck, but I don't have the money. Right. So now the, that's what the foundation's turned into is anything a police officer wants to do for their community. That's, um, within reason that I can afford to do, I'm going to help them do it. That's it awesome. It's man. not, you know, it's not about basketball anymore. It's, it's whatever. So yeah, I think it has changed, you know, the tune and social media that this is okay. It's encouraged. It creates a lot of positive vibe, and I think agencies are doing a lot more of it. And I, I do think it's because of that video. Yeah. It's cool just to, uh, again, kind of get something that's refreshing on social media, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, you know, having that. It was definitely one of those moments where you're just like, this is, we need more of this. Yeah. So I'm kind of, I'm really grateful to you that you did, that Ben talked you into <laughs> embracing it and actually like, taking ownership of that and being that voice. Cause I can completely empathize with the, you know, like uh, being, a lot of it kind of comes to even personal branding. We talk about personal branding a lot cause uh, I'm a big personal branding guy. I'm like, man, you gotta be building your personal brand. And then a lot of people look at that as like, ah, yeah, but you're bragging or it's narcissistic. Right. It's you know, it's these things, which I understand that perception. I'm like, well, it's reputation. You're like, it's your, that's what it is. I mean, we're like highlighting the good and, the, and using these things as as a way to impact and to create more positivity. So I would encourage you to to keep doing it, man, because it's it's awesome. And I, I'm extremely grateful um, to you and, and to Ben. I mean, like it's <laughs> it's funny. I can re I reflect back to a story with Ben. Somebody shared something that we were doing. I think it was when we were doing the helmet. We were doing the helmet giveaway during our busy time and somebody caught wind of it and sent it to Ben and and uh, Ben had emailed me and said, be careful, I actually used the same the same finger I used when posting the video yeah. of Basketball Cop. <laughs> I mean, it's changed, I like, it's changed things for Ben big time. I mean, after that happened, he, in the social media world and he blew up and, you know, now he's some kind of big, uh, like marketing social media guy for Allstate. That's like, so cool. Like, I think, international or 
it, he's got a great future with Allstate now. Yeah, so. I mean, both of you guys have realized the, you know, it's funny because I constantly have so many people tell me, oh, you can't build real relationships via social media. And like, and that's just the, the proof that you can. Like you're able to connect and to really impact with other humans through yeah. social media in a very positive way. And I, I think what you said about building a personal brand is important and, and it's and it's something I didn't do and I still don't do. I, I try to not make it about me. That's why it's not called my, you know, I, I've made friends with a lot of really great officers around the country doing great things and they all have their own Facebook pages that are, you know, officer this or officer that or officer this. And they pretty much only share stuff they're doing, which is fine, it's great. They're building great uh, relations in their community and I love these guys. I mean, I've traveled to see them, Officer Lamar Sharp up in Canton. If you don't follow his page, you need <laughs> to, he's <laughs> awesome. Um, Officer Darren Derby, Officer Darren Derby met me up in Ohio last year um, when Lamar released, he did like a screening of a documentary that's gonna be released probably on Netflix or those kind of things once they find a home for it, which is incredible. But what I'm getting at is I watch these guys' social media grow. Um, like Darren's does, it hasn't grown as much as my foundation page, but he's had it for half the time. Um, Lamar's has blown up. He has like 70,000 followers on Facebook because it's Officer Lamar Sharp. Mine is Basketball Cop Foundation. It's an organization. Mm -hmm. and. Um, so I think there is something to that, that personal branding. Are you saying that his has grown oh, yeah. more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's the only way I can kind of relate it to, uh, to what I do is like we started doing a vlog a few years ago and it was really behind the scenes of what was happening here at our scooter dealership. So we were just, I mean, it was kind of our own version of a reality TV show and it was just behind the scenes. Um, and, and what I started to realize over time was that even though our new Scooters for Less YouTube channel was steadily growing, I had just realized, I was like, man, people are connecting with me because I was technically like the star of the show, if you will, like I was the one that was kind of hosting, looking at the camera, hey vlog, blah, you know, doing doing these interactions and, and when people were commenting, I was the one commenting back, I, I was the human behind it right. and, and I realized like, people build relationships with you. It, like a lot of people will follow Colin Austin, the entrepreneur, you know, the guy who is, is out trying to have an impact on the world. People can will follow and connect with that, but it's not as intriguing to follow new scooters for less. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the business versus the personal brand is a little bit more challenging. Yeah. Both are important. Your business obviously has to have brand as well. Um, but I think when you build personal brand, you have the ability, you know, like I know that New Scooters for Less is gonna benefit. I know that the podcast is gonna benefit. I know that our media agency is gonna benefit. I know that speaking engagements, anything that I decide to do or be involved in will benefit by building up my personal brand. And that's just one of the things that I've realized over fi over 15 years of being an entrepreneur and finally figuring some of this out. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but you're right, it's, it's probably why his channel, you know, or his Facebook page has has grown quite a bit because people are connecting with him as yeah. the and human, the as and the that, officer. The content is more is more him. Like, I don't, you don't see many videos of me holding a camera, ta recording me, interacting. You know, there's some out there, if, you know, in certain situations I'll do or take a picture if there's a story behind the picture kind of thing. Yeah. Um, like with Taya, I posted something the other day I'm not comfortable with it. I don't, it's, this isn't about me. It, that It's actually the opposite. It's about, you know, using this platform to show that there's thousands of cops like sure. me all over the country. But if I did more of that, I guarantee you, I would have three times as many followers because that's the connection people. It's, it's sure. just not what I'm about. Um, I'd rather highlight another officer. It goes towards my mission. You know, my mission, everybody, Anyone that knows me and has seen, you know, has a certain feeling about me because of what I did, they they have it and that's fine. I, I'm good with that. I don't need more people to like Officer White or to think I'm great. I don't I don't need it. It doesn't it doesn't what is that gonna change? Right. That okay, there's still that one officer in Gainesville, but now 
you know, two million people know about them or three million people know about that one officer in Gainesville that's doing great things in Gainesville. That doesn't benefit anything. Right. You know, all it does is add to that narrative is we need more cops like him because the rest suck. And um, that's not the case. So that's, you know, it's not what I do. Well, I, 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 highlight, I like highlighting what other officers are doing and then supporting supporting their mission however I can. And, and uh, man, I've met some awesome cops, yeah. you know, that we've done. You start thinking of these, you know, you start reaching out to these cops and like, what can I do for your, your community? And they come up with the coolest things. Like, um, I don't know if you saw on my page earlier this year, I could, there was a cop that went kind of viral. He got out and he shared his lunch with a homeless guy. And somebody else took a picture and put it on social media and same thing he i've talked you know right when i saw that i shared it and i called him and he's like i didn't want it to be on social media someone else did it then the media started calling same thing what am i going to do so i said is there anything he's a school resource deputy in jackson county tennessee is there anything you want to do that i can help you with he goes man i live in the i work in the poorest school in our county and these kids come to school all the time with dirty clothes. They wear the same clothes every oh, day. They skip school because they don't want to be made fun of. They have dirty clothes. And I've been taking clothes home. Some of the teachers take clothes home to wash them. He's like, I've been trying to figure out a way to get a washer and dryer at the school. I'm like, okay, well, you just figured it out. So four days later, I had Lowe's deliver brand new front loading washer and dryer for the school. Um, Dude, that's incredible. And then that story, Someone else contacted me who I has a, she's a widow of an officer in South Carolina. Um, she lost her husband a few years ago and started an organization to help with that angle. And I've talked to her a few times and she called me. She said, there's, that's so funny, there's a deputy. She's been trying to do the same thing at her school as raise money for a washer and dryer. So I sent them one, brand new washer and dryer. So it, these cops are so innovative in you know, ways of helping and it's it's really cool you know hearing all these different ways like God, i would never thought of that yeah and that's what we're about it's like okay we can afford that <clears throat> you know that was within four days we spent twenty five hundred dollars on washers and dryers but we had the money and the impact you know not only the impact to these kids that they're going to be able to like wash get all their clothes washed at school in one day for the whole week and for next week um, so that impact it's having on the, just the kids in general, but they all know that their school resource officer made this happen for them. So it's, you know, it's a double hit, you know, you're, it's a win-win in two different ways. So, yeah, that's and, cool, man. Yeah. That's such, I mean, it's, it's so impactful. I guess the only thing I would say is I could totally see the, you know, not, not necessarily, you know, not bragging about it, right? You don't want to be like, oh, look at what we're doing. Everybody look at me. You know, here I am delivering washers and dryers, you know, doing like, I get that. I guess I would say is if somebody, if somebody sees it or, you know, just kind of like the guy, he had no intention of being photographed or filmed, right? right. He was just having lunch with a homeless gentleman and like, you know, doing him like that. That's, that's who he is. He's a good human being. That's, yep. He was doing his thing. Right. And somebody caught it and, and shared it. Right. Well, because it got shared, somebody else saw that at that, at that time, at that moment when that does get shared, I think it is okay. I think it is okay to say, yeah, you know, like I didn't intend on that happening, but I am, uh, yes, but that, it got that, a washer that, and dryer. That's who I am, <laughs> and it, yeah, and exactly right. right. It, it, you know, it did have uh, an impact on on people enough to where they shared it. There was there was human connection there. We were able to connect, and it led to some good. You know, and I and I think that I guess that's kind of like where I come at it is that like I agree, like no no need to brag, but like definitely when it's okay to to say. You know, yes. Thank, thank you for recognizing in that that in me. I, I'm, I am, I'm that kind of person. I, I want to do what's right. I want to do what's what's best for the for the community and what's best for for the people that we serve. Um, and you're definitely, you know, one of those individuals, and not that guy obviously is too. And and I think that's what's so inspiring, right? Like to people like me who see it, who catch it from the outside in, who do see the videos on on social media. Like it's like yes, like we want we want more of that. We want to be able to, um, 
have the ability to, to share that with people and Im- impact more lives. So I just give you a standing ovation. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so th- thank you for all you do. You got it. Um, before we wrap up, though, I want to circle back to the iTunes song real quick because <laughs> you mentioned the yeah, iTunes song. So, so you got an iTunes song. Yeah. And so, then we'll wrap up. So with one of our retired sergeants, um, Alan Gray, his son, uh, is a musician in Nashville. Does like kind of rocky, kind of pretty neat stuff. And um, he reached out to, he saw the story <clears throat> and he reached out to his dad and he goes, hey, do you think Bobby would let us want to, let us make a song for his foundation? And he's like, yeah, I think he would love that. So Alan came to me and I'm like, yeah, that'd be so cool. You know, I, I didn't know it would be on like I, iTunes and every other music download site it's on all of them so he's like what do you think the name should be and i'm like man i don't know and uh i started thinking i said you know what oh no this wasn't in relation to the name i was telling alan gray a story and he came up with this idea for the name it was one of our first donations of a basketball goal here in the city right after i started the foundation or it might have even been before i started the foundation that we were just had these goals showing up and one of our officers said, hey, I just took a call about a theft of a basketball goal. Someone stole these kids' goal from uh, one of the neighborhoods over here. I'm like, all right, well, let's bring them, let's surprise them with a new one. So we did that. And within <clears throat> 10 minutes of putting this goal up, we had like 20 kids playing basketball on it in this neighborhood. Yeah. And we had basketballs, you know, I brought like five basketballs and it was super loud and we were like creating a noise, you know, problem i guess <laughs> so <clears throat> all these kids are out there and some lady comes up to me with one of the balls and she's like hey can you autograph this for me and i'm like autograph like really I'm like okay you know and i she had a marker and so i said what's your name you know like i'm some celebrity or something like <laughs> two and i was like what the heck am i gonna write on this thing you know like best wishes or who knows i don't do this i'm a cop you know i'm used to just signing a citation or something so i hear all of this craziness going on behind me you know and she's a neighbor across the street from this goal just like the original complainant across from tyree and i put enjoy the noise you know and i put basketball cop so i told alan that story like a few weeks before his son reached out to him and he told his son that story and his son, like, that's the name of the song. Enjoy the noise. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's called Enjoy the Noise. I think there's another Enjoy the Noise. Um, but if you enjoy the noise, hashtag hoops not crime. Mm-hmm. You'll find it'll it. It'll pop up. Yeah. And it's Mackay and Thieves is the name. Okay. It's I forget how he spells Mackay. It's some weird. His name's Michael. And, he, you know, he's a musician. So he's got to be fancy. But, <laughs> but it's a... Stage name, baby. So he... He calls me, he's like, all right, I got this kind of rapper friend who's gonna do like a little part of it. It's like a rock kind of rap, it's an awesome song. And uh, he's like, we'll, we'll send you a copy. I'm thinking this is gonna take weeks and weeks. He goes, nah, like a few days, we already kind of know, we have the lyrics written, and they talk about, you'll hear the kind of the address, you know, about Shaq coming, yeah. you know, and you know, in the different choruses. That's cool. Yeah, so it's it's pretty awesome. It's an awesome song. You can I think you can buy it for ninety nine cents or something. Sweet, everybody go buy the go buy the song. <laughs> well, tell us where everybody, you know, we obviously have a huge Gainesville following. So where Gainesville can connect, but the world can connect with you. Where they can find you. You said you have a website, social yeah, media. Yeah, and the website is um, you know, I like I said, I do it myself. I don't update it as much as I should, but it's basketballcop.net. net. The, the best thing about the website, too, there's a big donate button at the top where people can donate to a couple of different platforms. Cool. Um, but the whole, you know, the foundation was born in social media on Facebook, and that's kind of where it lives, you know, and builds. So, yeah. Basketball Cop Foundation on Facebook is where you, people can stay the most up to date. There's a donate button right at the top of that too. Sweet. <clears throat> um, and like I said, we're on Twitter at Basketball Cop and on Instagram at at Basketball Cop Foundation. I don't post on there as much as the others yeah it's mostly facebook's kind of my thing um but yeah that's people want to keep up to date or they want to help i know i'm gonna have an initiative coming up like i said um 
it goes back to me wanting to rent an ice cream truck that costs a thousand dollars that I ultimately found out cost a thousand bucks before the foundation. So, um, I have a different events coming up. We have a basketball camp this weekend. That's the registration is full on that, but, um, we're going to be going up. I think Flint, Michigan is the city that we're going to visit this year and do a take over the streets okay. basketball event. We did one in Brooklyn. We did one in Detroit last year. Um, we have that coming up, but we all, I'm also going to do a, um, kind of a contest and I'm going to be challenging officers across the country to submit a, uh, kind of a story a request of, um, if you had a thousand dollars to do something for your community, what would it be? And I'm going to pick probably the top three, um, submissions to that, to go ahead and fund whatever it is they want to do to help their community, um, a thousand dollars a piece. So we're going to be doing that coming up. So that's cool. Yeah. So we have different things, you know, throughout the year, our annual events and stuff that we do that people can keep up to date, but you know, mostly go there and, and, uh, it's kind of a hub where you can just see positive community policing efforts all over the country because I share them constantly. When I see them, I share them. Yeah. Um, well, thank yeah. you. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Thanks for, I mean, to you and all the other officers here in Gainesville for doing what you guys do. I mean, um, definitely get mad love from me and definitely from uh, you know everybody else. We're so grateful for you guys and, and just keep it up, man. Keep that positive impact and using social media for good because you guys, you guys are the example and it's inspiring to somebody who I love. Everybody who knows me knows that I love social media. <laughs> And so seeing, again, like everybody use, you know, seeing you guys use it in a very positive light like that is, yeah. is fantastic. And you, so you have to because, so grateful. The, you know, that all the negative people are using it against us positive people. And right. if we just sit back and don't use it and fight back with it, it's, we're going to lose, you know, because perception is everything. And unfortunately, Facebook is where most people form their, you know, opinions and perceptions and all that. Yeah, so if we're exactly not on right. there fighting back with the positive stuff. We're in a losing battle, so. That's exactly right. Well, thank you again, Gainesville World. Bobby White, there he is. Go support him, the basketball cop. Find him on social media, on the web. Donate to their cause. Help them keep sp- spreading the positivity. Hoops, not crime, baby. This is the WHOA GNV Podcast. The podcast bring you businesses and individuals that make you go, whoa. whoa. We'll see you later. Bye.